Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the big news. The topic for today's discussion, Agni 5. Before we understand what this topic is in greater detail, a quick gentle reminder. Baiju's Exam Prep IAS is now on Telegram. If you have not yet joined the channel, please do join so that you get all the current affairs related updates. Let's get started and try and understand what is this topic all about. India recently test fired the nuclear capable ballistic missile which happens to be Agni 5. This was the ninth test firing of the Agni 5 and this missile has a range of about 5000 km. What are the features of Agni 5? Agni 5 is an ingeniously developed surface to surface missile that was developed under Integrated Guided Missile Developmental Program. This program happens to be the brainchild of APJ Abdul Kalam Ji and he wanted to make India self sufficient in the field of missile technology. As part of this program, there are about 5 missiles that were launched. How do we remember this? Let me give you a code. Remember Patna. So, which are the missiles that are under Integrated Guided Missile Developmental Program? One, what we have is Prithvi. Second is Agni. Third is Trishul. Fourth is Nag. And fifth happens to be Akash. So, if you remember Patna, you would be able to remember all the five missiles that were under progress as part of integrated guided missile developmental program so the program has five missiles which includes prithvi agni trishul nag and akash the missile has a fire and forget principle of operation what do we mean by it it means that the missile guidance does not require any further guidance after the launch and can still hit the target without the launcher being in line of the sight of the target. This basically means once it is launched, it does not need further guidance after the launching of the missile. The missile has a very high degree of accuracy. It can hit targets precisely as well and it has a height of about 17.5 meter, diameter of 2 meters weight of about 50,000 kg engine is a three-stage solid and it has a nuclear warhead of 1500 kg so remember these are some of the important pointers from the preliminary examination point of view the missile can also reach an exceptional speed of Mach 24 which is about 29,401 kilometers per hour. This basically means it has a very high speed, countries would not be able to stop it and then there would be massive devastation in the country wherever it is launched. When we speak about the speed, how exactly does it work? When we speak about the speed, what we have to know is the trajectory of Agni 5. We have something called as the boost phase. Second, what we have is the mid course phase. Third, what we have is the terminal phase. When we speak about the boost phase, what exactly happens? The missiles will be launched via these rockets. So initially, it will require a lot of energy to be spent. That is because it has to fight against the Earth's gravity, inertia as well as the atmospheric drag. So the initial phase, when the rocket is launched, that is what is called as the boost phase. Followed by this, what we have is the mid course phase. And finally, what we have is the terminal phase. It is at this terminal phase because this particular missile is falling with the gravity. It will achieve speeds of as much as 24 Mach. So remember, we have the boost phase where the rocket is launched. Then it takes its course of action in the mid course. And finally, when it is at the terminal phase, when it is falling down towards the ground, where there is already gravity that is present. So at this particular point is when this missile will achieve speeds of Mac 24. Agnify happens to be a road mobile and can be transported via a truck and launched via a canister as well. The missile is equipped with what is called as multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles. What are these MIRVs or the re-entry vehicles? When we speak about warheads, there can be a single warhead, there can be a multiple warheads as well. Let's say there is a missile which has a single warhead. In this case, it is what is called as the unitary warhead. So there will be one particular missile, so there will be only one warhead as well. So when it is launched, it goes and falls on the ground. So we have the missile, we just have one warhead. But what if within a missile, there are multiple warheads, let's say for example 2 to 3 
4 to 5 that is what is called as multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles so in this particular case the missile will have multiple warheads so the minute it is launched this canister opens up and as a result what you will see is multiple warheads falling into this particular area so the minute Agnify is launched if it is targeting one of the countries it is not having a single warhead but it will have multiple warheads so the minute it falls opens up and falls it will create a massive devastation in the country wherever it is so this means that there is one single warhead in the form of unitary warhead but the MIRVs is where we have different or multiple warheads and Agnify happens to be a multiple independently targeted re-entry vehicle which means it has more warheads. So basically this is capable of hitting multiple targets in the region wherever it is hitting. And this is also considered as the intercontinental ballistic missile primarily because it has a range greater than 5500 kilometers and it has a range which can hit the northernmost part of China and it also has the range where it can reach some part of Europe as well as Africa as well. These are some of the features with respect to Agni 5. Added to it, we also have other Agni system as well. We have Agni 1 which is a single state solid fuel. It is a medium range ballistic missile. Range is 700 to 900 kilometer. Weight of 12,000 kg. Length of 15 meters. Agni 2 is a MRBM with two solid fuel stages. Range is 2,000 to 3,000. Weight is 6,000 kg. Length is 21 meters. Agni 3 has two stages and it uses solid propellant in both the stages. Range is 3500 to 5000 km, weight 48000 kg, length is 17 meters. Then we have Agni 4 which is a two stage missile powered by solid propellant. It is intermediate range ballistic missile, 3000 to 4000 km is its range, weight is 7000 kg and the length is about 20 meters. Who undertook this particular test when we speak about Agni 5 or any other nuclear missiles what we have is the strategic forces command which took care of this test it is a key tri services formation that manages and administers all the strategic assets and falls under the purview of nuclear command authority of india the nuclear command authority is the sole body which can authorize the use of nuclear weapons it comprises a political council and an executive council the political council is headed by the prime minister the executive council is chaired by the national security advisor provides input for the decision making by the nuclear command authority executes the directives given by the political executive so what is the significance of Agnify when you look at Agnify it would now be able to reach almost the entire Asia including the northernmost part of China including Beijing as well as well as some parts in Europe are within its striking range very few countries have this particular capability this includes USA Russia China France and Israel who already have such missiles and this Agnify is a canistered missile which basically means it can be launched from road and rail platforms this makes it easy for the deployment and at the same time since this is an encapsulated system the missile is stored and launched for a longer shelf life protecting it from harsher climatic conditions as well when we speak about Agnify in the past when India did test Agnify China was not happy with it and it raised this United Nations Security Council resolution of 1172 what is this 1172 this is related to 1998 nuclear test by both India and Pakistan so a resolution was passed in 1998 and that resolution is what is called as UNSC resolution of 1172 so basically, the Security Council had called upon both the countries to stop further nuclear tests, cap their nuclear weapons program, seize all fissile material production and end the development of ballistic missile capable of delivering the nuclear weapons. So this resolution was approved under Chapter 6 of the UN Charter, which means it is non-binding in nature. So whenever China feels it is worried about this nuclear test, it immediately invokes UNSC resolution 
of 1172 which is related to 1988 nuclear test by both India and Pakistan. Then we have to remember that India has no first use policy. So Agnify is in accordance with India's policy of credible minimum deterrent where we support our commitment to no first use policy. This basically means India would never use the nuclear weapons first in a conflict situation but only use it as a means of retaliation and the arsenal that India has maintained is only for the deterrent effect. And when it comes to China, it also has an intercontinental ballistic missile, which is China's Dongfang 26. It also has an estimated range of 5000 km. This is also nicknamed as Gom Killer, which happens to be a nuclear capable missile. The missile is named as it has the potential to reach US base in Gom in Western Pacific. And finally, we also have Agni 6, which is in the making and is under development. And it can also have a range of as much as 8000 km. It is this that we have to understand with respect to this topic. So, this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.